Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Science. In this episode I'm going to be teaching you about elements and also atoms. You might have heard of both of those words before but maybe not sure as to what elements are or what atoms are. Atoms comes from the word atomos which means unable to be divided. Let's take a step forward here and start exploring what an atom is. Atoms are the building blocks of all the substances you can interact with. So if you look around you, everything around you is made out of particular atom, a, of a particular atom. And in most cases, it's actually a combination of many different atoms that are coming together to create a substance. The image here I have on the right is an image of a hydrogen atom where you have the nucleus in the middle and on the outside you have electrons electrons on the outside and protons and neutrons in the nucleus and um, we're going to explore what i mean by that proton neutron and electron particles in just a moment this atoms are the smallest unit of a chemical element that can exist let's have another look at a picture of an atom so as our science and technology improves we're getting better at taking images of atoms and if you hit the googles and you um, search up images of atoms there will be a growing collection of images of atoms here is an award-winning photograph entitled single atom in an ion trap this shows a single strontium atom trapped in an electric field just there and if you want to learn more about how we were able to take this photo load up the PowerPoint and click into this link it's really really cool science so we are getting better at taking images and seeing visually um, atoms despite how small they are how small are they well it would take a stack of about 50,000 aluminium atoms to equal the thickness of a sheet of aluminium foil from your kitchen. I mean, the thickness of an aluminium foil. A human hair is about 1 million carbon atoms wide. So imagine 1 million carbon atoms fitting across this human hair. And you can see that hair is actually quite scaly. A typical human cell contains roughly 1 trillion atoms. Now, this is something to think about because your bodies are actually made out of trillions of cells and each of those cells could be something like a trillion atoms. I mean, consider for a moment what that means. You are made up of trillions upon trillions upon trillions of atoms. A speck of dust might contain something like three trillion atoms. If you, um, it would take you around 500 years to count the number of atoms in a grain of salt. If you went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, it would take you 500 years of counting like that to get to the number of atoms just in one grain of salt. I mean, they're crazy small. They're so small that we it's very difficult to take photos of because atoms are smaller than the wavelength of light. So we have to invent new technology, new science, to be able to take these kinds of images of atoms. And again, if you want to learn more, definitely click on to this link on how we took this image. Okay, so you might have seen a periodic table before. A periodic table shows you all the elements within our universe, some of which, especially the unstable ones here, are created in a scientific lab. But the ones up here uh, can be found naturally throughout our universe. Um, so we've got hydrogen, which you've probably heard of before, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluoron, neon, and so on and so forth. It's worth studying the periodic table just a little bit and becoming familiar with the various elements and where they're found on the periodic table. But this is essentially showing us the purest form of substances we can have in the universe. So we can have pure hydrogen, pure helium, pure lithium, pure beryllium. Many of these elements actually come together and form bonds with each other. But when we want to break it down to its most simple form, its simple form is in the form of elements 
and these are the elements we find in our universe. Each element has its own special atom, its own special atom. So a hydrogen atom will be made out of a particular atom, and the helium element will have its own particular atom with its own characteristics and its own particles. Let's explore what I mean by this. So now I'm going to um, explore the building blocks of matter, atoms. Now there's three main parts to an atom which we'll explore in Year 8 Science. Oops. Atoms are the smallest possible unit into which matter can be divided while maintaining its properties. Within the middle of the atom, which we call the nucleus, we have two particles. This is where the protons and neutrons are found. The protons determine what kind of element it is. So in this particular atom, I've got three protons. And you can see a plus symbol here because protons are positively charged. Protons are positively charged. The two Ps go together. If I come back to the periodic table, an atom with three protons is the number three on the periodic table, the atomic number of three. So the atom that I'm showing you here with three protons is actually lithium. Lithium. If I was to add one more proton to this atom, I would change the element. If I was to add one more proton, I would move to four on the periodic table, atomic number of four, and I would change my element from lithium to beryllium. If I was to plus one more proton into the nucleus, I would change my element to boron. If I was to add one more nucleus and get to six protons, I would go to carbon. One more, seven to nitrogen, one more, eight to oxygen, one more, nine to fluorine, one more, ten to neon. So the element and what element it is, is determined by how many protons are found within the nucleus of the atom. And that's an important thing to remember. So when you go to take your notes later on, I want you to note down that the number of protons in the nucleus determines what element it is. And on the periodic table here, the number up the top is the atomic number. And the atomic number tells you how many protons are in the atom um, for this particular element. We also have neutrons within the nucleus, and they serve their function, which we'll leave for now, but they add mass to the atom. Around the outside of the nucleus, we have electrons. Electrons have a negative charge. Electrons have a negative charge. And the electrons around the outside of the atom determines how the atom reacts, determines how the atom chemically reacts with other elements. And there are certain patterns to learn there as well, but we'll keep it simple for this particular lesson. So the three particles that make up atoms are my protons, which are positively charged. The two Ps go together. I've got neutrons in the nucleus as well, which have no charge. They are neutral. So the two ends go together. That's how you remember them. Protons positive, neutrons neutral. The electrons which go around the outside determine how the atom chemically reacts with other atoms. Electrons are negatively charged. So this slide is very important for your notes. And also I want you to add that the number of protons determines what element you are dealing with. On the periodic table, the atomic number up the top tells you how many protons are found in that element. Okay, let's take a step forward here. Um, on this particular slide, I'm just reminding you of the notes that I'd like you to take. So the atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom, which is characteristic of a chemical element and determines its place on the periodic table. So magnesium, atomic number of 12, that means there's 12 protons in the nucleus. Aluminium, 13 protons in the nucleus. Silicon, 14 protons in the nucleus. The number of protons determines the element. The mass number. All atoms have a particular mass to them. The more particles they have in their nucleus, the more massive they are. The total number of protons and neutrons in an atom's nucleus 
is referred to as the mass number. So what would be the mass number of this atom? I've got three protons, which means I'm dealing with lithium. Three protons, and I've got one, two, three, four neutrons within the nucleus as well. Three plus four gives me an atomic mass unit of seven. So lithium has a mass of seven. If I come back to the purity table, it's got 6.94, which is a decimal. Now this is representing an average of isotopes, which we don't need to cover at this moment. So if you see a decimal here, I would just want you to round it. So 6.94, we can round up to seven. Beryllium has a mass of nine. Okay, beryllium has a mass of nine, meaning it's got four protons, and that means it must have five neutrons. Boron has five protons. It's got a mass of, let's round this number up to 11, which means that it would have six neutrons. I would go 11, mass number, minus the atomic number of five. The atomic number is the number of protons. So if I go 11 minus five, that tells me I'm left with six neutrons. A little bit more practice on this in just a moment. But the main information from this particular slide is that atoms have a mass to them and their mass is determined by how many protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus. Coming back to the periodic table, you can find that as I move down the periodic table, left to right and down, the mass of the element increases. It's 106, 107, 112, 114, so on and so forth, until we get here, 294. So these elements here are very unstable. It's very difficult for those, for the nucleus to stay together because it is so massive, because you have so many particles within that nucleus, these elements decay very quickly. They break apart very quickly. But the main idea is as I move down the periodic table and left to right, my mass or the mass inside of the atoms increases. I have more protons, more neutrons as I move down the periodic table and the atom gets bigger. Okay. So on this slide here, I've got a representation of how to read the periodic table, um, the information that's found on it. Up the top, you'll find the atomic number, which represents the number of protons. O is the symbol of the element. Oxygen is the name of the element. And down the bottom, the larger number is the atomic mass. The atomic mass being protons plus neutrons. Atomic number equals the number of protons, and typically the number of electrons are the same as number of protons, except when the atom is an ion. So we don't need to worry about ions at this stage. So up the top here, number of protons equals the atomic number, or the atomic number equals number of protons. In a normal neutral atom, this is also equal to the number of electrons in the atom as well. So oxygen has eight protons, and it will also have eight electrons around it as well. And finally, atomic mass equals the number of protons and neutrons. So this slide here will be quite important for your study notes as well. I want you to put this down into your study notes to refer back to um, when you're preparing for your test. Um, I think I'll leave it as part one here and make another video labeled as part two. Um, so thank you for paying attention for this one. Hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you in the next episode.